If you've been around the legal profession, more than likely you've heard the word torts, but do you know the meaning? Our guest, FAMU Law Professor Leroy Purnell, is very familiar with the term. He teaches a course on torts and he's here to explain it. Thank you for joining us. My pleasure, glad to be here. What is a tort? Well, a tort, and, and we spend some time in torts defining this because it's a term that, that is a little loose sometimes. But essentially what a tort is, is a, a civil remedy for injuries arising other than by contract. So a breach of contract, you have remedies mm -hmm. that come from the contract. But if you're injured in some other way, in terms of, of getting compensation in court, mm -hmm. uh, you have to have a legal theory. And tort is the legal theory. Uh, there are a number of different types of torts that, that, that people experience and, 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 and the courts deal with. What are some of the more difficult torts to prove? Well, you know, all torts can be difficult. Uh, the most common one that uh, uh, has a level of difficulty to it that, that, that uh, people re don't readily understand is the cause of action of negligence. Mm -hmm. And so as I explain it to students, when you're hurt, uh, it's not enough to go to court and say, I was hurt and I should be compensated. You have to have a legal theory that entitles you to be compensated. Mm -hmm. uh, negligence basically requires that the person who wishes to be compensated prove that the person who hurt them acted as an unreasonable person. And it's difficult sometimes to define exactly what is a reasonable person, and what is an unreasonable <laughs> person. So we leave that up to the jury. We, we give the jury some definitions of, of standards to apply, but ultimately they, they need to determine what is the appropriate standard of care that allegedly uh, was violated. Mm -hmm. And so you have to prove that, then you have to prove things that we call causation. We have to prove that the, or, or, or the person who's injured has to prove that the, the, the injury or the actions of the alleged, or what we call a tort feeser, mm -hmm. the alleged defendant, uh, actually caused the injury that the person uh, is seeking compensation for. Now, again, negligence deals with an area that we call unintentional torts. Mm -hmm. It doesn't, it, the person doesn't have to intend to cause injury to be responsible if they were negligent, if they acted unreasonable, if they failed to act as a reasonably prudent person. Okay. We have a whole other category of torts that we call intentional torts, hmm. where we allow people to be compensated uh, for injuries caused by people who intended to cause harm. That's, uh, I was thinking, I chuckled back when you were talking about the reasonable person standard because it seems that <laughs> it's getting more difficult to understand who is reasonable <laughs> right now. Um, but I wanted to touch on, is, is slavery a tort or was slavery a tort? And there's well, discussion uh, about that in well, reparations. Well, uh, slavery itself, um, there, there are, I mentioned that this category of torts known as intentional harms. Mm -hmm. And holding somebody against their will is a tort. It's false imprisonment. Mm -hmm. uh, and there are a number of other things that happened uh, and that were uh, connected and certainly identified with slavery uh, that would be torts. Mm -hmm. uh, beating somebody is a tort. Mm -hmm. Killing somebody, raping somebody. Those are crimes, but they're also torts that in our legal system today, you certainly would be entitled to compensation for those, uh, for those wrongs that were done to you. But slavery was intentional. Mm -hmm. uh, people were not slaves, or were, enslaved people didn't exist by accident. It was the intent of someone to enslave them. And under the traditional, what we call common law, mm -hmm. uh, that would be a false imprisonment, holding somebody against their will. And then the question becomes, who can bring a tort claim? Um, if you are indirectly affected, how is the law set up for the people who are seeking relief? Well, you have to, of course, be the injured party. Mm -hmm. uh, you have to have a theory that says that the law recognizes that you are entitled to recovery. And that could be a lot of different uh, circumstances. Mm -hmm. uh, usually it's the person who has directly received the harm. Sometimes it may be an individual 
who is suffering because another person was hurt. Mm -hmm. uh, but because of a family relationship, uh, they're suffering a loss. Uh, and very often those types of individuals can recover. Uh, the law has uh, not answered some questions about who can recover, and it's been debate, for example, does an unborn child get to recover? Oh. Uh, that's, a, that's, that's a sticky question. Um, one of the things that, that people need to also understand about tort law in this country, we have 50 different states. We have 50 different sets of tort law. Tort oh. law. Uh, and we have federal system, we have other systems. There's not a uniform system of, of, of tort law or legal theories and so you can get variations from state to state, from jurisdiction to jurisdiction. Wow, uh, lots to think about. We thank you as always for taking time to talk to us and educate us on these matters, enlighten us. Thank you, Professor. My Herman. pleasure. Yeah. Torts are just one of the legal topics being taught in law school, of course. We now have a better understanding of torts and what they are.